So now you need to learn how to read tablature. We've done all the other bits. We've learned about the guitar. We've learned about the open strings. Um, and that will now all come into play. So the open strings, the reason why you learned that is to make sense of when you're reading tablature as well. Okay. So looking at your tab stave, which will come up on screen now. So just a blank tab stave. Um, you'll see that it says tab on the, on the beginning there. So it says T-A-B. Okay. Um, the T is like that. So you've got the T at the top, A, and then the B. So it spells out the word tab. Um, the T is, is close to the, the high string. Okay. So it's an important thing to remember. So it's a little bit like looking at it sort of <clears throat> upside down. So the T is actually stands for sort of the treble end of the guitar. And then um, you've got the A, which is like the treble and bass. And then you've got the B, which is the low end of the guitar, so the thick string, okay? So if you remember it that way, or simply, the bottom line of the tablature is your low thick string, and the top line of the tablature is your high E string, okay? And that's the most important thing to remember because people get confused with reading it up the wrong way. So that's really important to remember that that's how you read tablature, okay? What else might you see on the tab? Um, in this part of the course, you'll just see sort of basic numbers, okay? So you'll see numbers. Um, you'll see numbers that are spaced out, so you might have like a, a one, two, three, four, five, spaced out like that. If you've got that, it means you play um, number one, then you play number two, then number three, then number four, and then number five, and, and so on. Um, you might see them stacked up, okay? So when we go into um, further detail, and we go into learning chords, you'll see the notes stacked up on top of each other. So you might see like a, a two, 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 three, or, or whatever it may be, okay? Um, that would be a chord, okay? Because they're all stacked up on top of each other, and you'll see that all perfectly in a line. And what that means is you have to play all the notes at the same time, okay, to make a chord. What else might you see? You might see a zero on there, okay? And you might be thinking, well, what's that? I haven't got a zero. Where do I do a zero on my guitar? That's simply an open string, okay? So if you see a zero anywhere, um, say it said zero and it was on top of the A string, okay? Then you would know that you have to play the A string open, all right? All the lines on the stave, as I said, so six from the bottom, five, four, three, two, one, or E, A, D, G, B, E. They all obviously correspond to a string on your guitar. And it's just how quickly you can learn that process of matching the, the line on the sheet to which string it is on the guitar is, is really, really important. And the quicker you get at sort of seeing that information and relaying it to the guitar, the quicker your process of learning songs will get, okay? Other things you might see on tab, is you might see like a little hook, you might see like a two and then like a three next door to it, and you see like a little hook over the top, like a bridge. Um, that might be a hammer on or a pull off. Sometimes it will say, I have a H at the top or a HO, or sometimes a P or a PO, and that just simply stands for pull off or hammer on, and that's just a technique on the guitar. Just trying to think of things you might see as you look through the tablature. Um, sometimes you might see SL or uh, a little like a like a uh, like a sl like a slide. It actually looks like a slide. It's going up like that or down like that, and that simply means slide up or down. Okay. Obviously, if we do any of that in the tablature, I'll explain it to you that it's coming up and, and what to look out for. Um, but that's basically what you need to know. So you need to know your open strings. You need to understand that if the the numbers are separated out like one, two, three, four, you play the notes singly. Uh, also, I should say as well, if you had like three ones in, in a row, you would play the one three times, okay? Um, if you had two twos in, in, in on, on say, on the E string, on the sixth string, you would play them twice, okay? So if you had tablature that said one, one, two, two, you would play on the low E string, you would play, okay? So you play them both, you know, once, twice, three, and then four times, okay? And that's it really. So that's basically that's reading tablature and that's all you're gonna to need to know to do the next exercise that we're gonna show you. Okay, so now you can read tablature. Let's get playing, shall we? So let's get an actual warm up now where we can get our fingers working and we can also practice reading the tablature at the same time, all right? So this one's called the spider warm up um, and it's just great. It's a real great way. You'll find this probably quite a lot on the internet. It's a real, it's one of the best systems I've found for um, you know, getting your fingers moving, and also a good exercise to practice you reading the tablature as well. So you get a document to download with this one. It's called the spider warm up. You'll see in a minute why we call it the spider. You're going to be using fingers one, two, three, and four. So all of your fingers are going to be in use for this, and we're going to be aiming for nice and clear notes up close to the fret wires, as we said there. What we're going to do, I'm going to play you through the whole exercise, going up and back, and then you're going to have a go at that. Okay? Here we go. <laughs> I played it really quickly there for you. Yours is not going to be that quick and it doesn't need to be. You're just practicing yours at a much slower tempo, okay? Um, 
We start with finger one on fret one of the low E string, okay? And you'll see this on the tablature sheet that you get to download with this. This is on the low E string, um, fret number one with finger number one. We pick that one, then we're gonna use finger two, fret two of the E string, and we move up. Finger three, fret three of the E string, and finger four, fret four of the E string. Make sure you reach that one out so you're not there, you're right close to the fret wire, okay? And then all we do now is we follow the exact same pattern straight down the guitar, so onto the A string, one, two, three, four, on the D string, two, three, four, on the G string, one, two, three, four, on the B string, one, two, three, four, and on the high E string, one, two, three, four. Okay? Once we got to the top and you've got to there, just slowly make sure it's nice and clear, okay? So if you've got any buzzes and rattles, stay on that part just on the um, the ascending part, so going up, just stay on that part for until you've got it sounding nice and clean and nice and clear. Don't do it too fast, just keep it nice and you know, nice and clean. What you're practicing here is you're building up the strength of your fingers and the dexterity in your left uh, left hand, and also you're practic practicing the accuracy of the right hand with a plectrum as well, okay? Um, you may want to be using a plectrum for your for your player. Most guitars will use a plectrum, so it's important to be using a pet plectrum. And just quickly, how you hold a plectrum is important. Um, you know, where you put your plectrum in your hand and how you hold it, the angle of the plectrum is quite important. So the way I hold my plectrum is um, the pointy bit, which is the you know most most useful part, which is the spiky bit of the plectrum, the bottom bit here. You're gonna that's always gonna be angled down, okay? So that's the, the pointy bit here underneath is the bottom part of the plectrum. You're gonna angle that down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thumb over the top of the pick like that, okay? And then what I do, I curl my first finger around like that and I push it back against the pick that side there, okay? So that's how I hold my plectrum. You don't want too much pick showing like that, you don't want loads of pick like that, okay? Because that's gonna get stuck in the strings and you've got more chance of dropping that. Um, so I want it just hidden like that. So I just want just about the right amount of plectrum on there. In terms of plectrum sizes and things like that, there's you've got like small, medium, and large in terms of the thicknesses. Um, a medium pick is what I'm using here today. I find it's sort of a happy medium. There's a bit of give to it, but it's not too firm. Um, but you can try just I would I would just go down to your local music shop and get a mixture of different different pick plectrums and just get used to you know which one you like the feel of and just try a different one each time you practice until you find one that suits you. Okay. Um, so that was the exercise, the spider, just to remind you, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way down ascending. Once you've mastered that, you want to be descending then. So we've gone from finger one to finger four, one, two, three, four. Now you want to be descending. So you want to go from finger four to finger one. So we're going to go four, four, three, two, one on the high E, uh, four, three, two, one on the B. So I'll play it for you. When you're picking this as well, just to start with, I want you to pick it all down, okay? So just all down picked. Don't worry about anything else or any up picks or whatever there. Don't worry about that. Just keep it as all down picked. So do the whole exercise all the way down um, using down picks. So the exercise goes. <laughs> Okay, and that's the spider warm up. Have fun with that. Don't rush it. Try and get your notes nice and clear. Um, as I said, spend probably, I reckon you want to do that three to four times in your practice schedule. Um, maybe once or twice at the beginning of your practice before you start playing, and then maybe twice or once or twice at the end of your practice, uh, just as like a warm up and a cool down. Hope you enjoy that. I'll see you in the next video.